Today we're going to look at a very inexpensive but practical accessory, the CV Life Low Profile M-Lock Bipod. Now I know this is pedantic and redundant to most of you who clicked on this video, but I have to explain what a bipod is to the uninformed and the YouTube staff who have repeatedly misclassified bipods as a gun modification. It is not. They are a rifle accessory. Now for those whose firearm knowledge comes exclusively from playing Call of Duty or Fortnite, a bipod doesn't turn your rifle into a sniper. Bipods are a common civilian accessory in hunting and the sport of long distance target shooting. But bipods aren't some modern new gadget. They're old, and I'm not talking decades old. I mean, they're practically ancient. They're as old as, well, rifles themselves. And to address YouTube's specific firearms restrictions, I am not showing any internal modifications to make a gun full auto or accept a high capacity magazine. No, uh, a bipod is essentially a kickstand for a rifle. It helps keep the rifle from falling over. That's it. So with that explanation out of the way, let's get started and take a look at the CV Life M-Lock Bipod. All right, this is the CV Life M-Lock Bipod. And as you can see, a very plain box that you get. Let's see what you get inside. Nothing else. All right, we have an Allen wrench and we have the bipod itself. You can use the Allen wrench to attach your bipod to your M-Lock rail or handguard um, using these screws here at the bottom. Um, that's what these, this Allen wrench is for. You just screw that through your M-Lock slots. And uh, let's just take a moment here. Let me just bring this up if I can get this to focus. This has a really nice robust design. You can see this whole large raised area below uh, your M-Lock T-nut screws here. This slips into your M-Lock slot and really provides a, m a much sturdier, more rugged base for heavy recoil. So if you had anything larger than a 5.56 five, or 223, like a 308 or um, six and a half Creedmoor or even larger, this would be a much better designed bipod uh, for those heavy recoil uh, rifles. Now, as I can see here, this directly attaches, you can see it's a low profile, it uh, goes right into a octagonal shaped uh, handguard. So if you have other handguards uh, that are in lock, this just make sure that uh, uh, it has this sort of um, V-shaped base that allow you to, to directly attach, but it is very low profile. Now, I used to think that that Harris did not make a direct attach bipod, and they, they didn't up to uh, this year. I went to SHOT Show and saw a prototype of Harris's direct attach uh, M-Lock bipod. It hasn't yet been released as far as I know. It is a little bit higher than this because it allows for canting uh, of uh, your rifle on the bipod. This does not. This directly attaches and is very fixed. So the advantage is it's much lower profile than uh, Harris's new design, uh, but it doesn't allow canting. So depending on uh, your application, if you're bench rush shooting, this is perfectly fine. If um, you're uh, hunting or you know, outdoors, well, it depends on, on what your needs are. But this is overall a Harris style uh, bipod. You can see here from uh, the spring-loaded legs, which uh, pop out. And it has spring-loaded feet as well. You press on these tabs and the, the, the legs pop out. I should say spring-loaded legs, not feet. The feet themselves are rubberized and they don't appear to easily be removed or replaced with spikes. So this is you know, what, it, what it is. These, are, um, these legs themselves are not internally spring-loaded, so you're not fighting against them. You're just um, you can, uh, adjust the heights by these uh, different segments here. There aren't, there's no fine height adjustments. And the spring at the very end here is what pops the leg out. So you do have to compress press this down, this leg down all the way, so it compresses that spring to allow it to spring out. Otherwise, it will not spring out. So that's just a... Uh, just an inherent, well, this is a little primer on how to use uh, these bipods. You attach it, again, you attach it to the bottom of uh, your rifle and um, you should be good to go. 
All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna take it out to the range, but for the rest of y'all, this is what you get in the box. I mounted the bipod on a Ruger Precision Rimfire and took it out to the local gun range to test it out. All right, let's take a quick look at how this functions. This is a hairstyle bipod, which means it deploys very quickly. The legs just swing out, and as you can see, the lower legs pop out of the main leg tubes. The lower half of the legs can be quickly retracted or adjusted to an appropriate and comfortable height, and it easily stows along the length of your barrel and handguard to save space. But the leg angle is limited to either stowed or deployed. You can shoot it prone or from a bench, or as I mentioned earlier, you can use it simply as a kickstand to keep your rifle from falling into the dirt. So let's take a walk back to the 100 yard benches and see how well this bipod performs on this rifle. I want to take a moment here and just ask you to do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. It's absolutely free and it just takes a second. Especially if you enjoy watching firearms and gun accessory videos because it tells the AI that this is the kind of content people like to watch. Otherwise they will suppress it. It's called soft censorship. And outside of video games, anti-gun bias exists in big tech. And if you like to watch things other than gun stuff, well, check out my other channel, Moondog R&D. If you don't see a link now, you'll find one at the end of the episode. So the setup I have here is the CV Life bipod on a Ruger Precision Rimfire and 22 long rifle and a 4 24 Arkin SH4. Note to YouTube, this is a rifle scope, not thermal night vision. And I'm firing Federal Champion Blue Box. Now, as we know, Rimfire does not have any significant recoil, so we're not testing the bipod's durability. But what I did learn is, the bipod is plenty stable. Anybody who shoots precision rimfire knows that 22s are very sensitive to an inconsistent, shaky platform. Even a little bit of movement makes a big difference on the groups at 100 yards. And while it's a poor workman that blames his tools, in this case, the bipod was rock solid. The ammo, on the other hand, well, that's another story for another video. Be sure to hit subscribe and you'll be notified when I post that review. So what can I tell you about this CV Life bipod? Well, the darn thing works. It attaches with an Amlock rail, very low profile, it's lightweight, it's very rigid and uh, stable. Now, does this thing have the same reliability and ruggedness as a Harris bipod? Uh, no. Harris's are heavy duty US made bipods that don't attach via Amlock. Well, not until now. At SHOT Show this year, I got to see a prototype of one. You can see that video on my channel. I don't know when Harris is going to release their bipod, but I am fairly certain it's going to cost a wee bit more than the CV Life bipod. Now in terms of long-term durability, well, I just got this thing. If you own one and have had it for over a year, please leave a comment, let us all know how well this thing has held up. And if you have it mounted on a larger caliber rifle, like a 308 or 300 Win, uh, I'd like to see video, so leave me a comment. If you're interested in picking up one of these bipods, I'll include links and a full written review on my blog, MoondogIndustries.com. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Here's a simple and easy way to promote Second Amendment freedoms. Share this video with your gun buddies on whatever social media you're on. Forums, Facebook, Reddit, Telegram, whatever. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com. Thank you.